Uh, hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So this morning I was talking a little bit about the liquidity hub and the latest announcement uh, with regards to that. If you guys didn't catch that video, I do suggest you watch it. Um, you know, a lot of new moves here for Ripple. Connecting crypto liquidity, guys, this is going to be uh, what is assuming going to be for institutional usage. And, uh, you know, if liquidity is needed in such a high capacity that Ripple has to create a standalone product for it, that in itself speaks volumes. And that in itself is getting me really, really excited to what we are going to see in the coming months and years. Okay, market cap right now at about $1.3 trillion, guys. But this is going to change and change very, very soon. So if you guys didn't catch that video, I do suggest you watch it. I'm seeing some more developments here from RippleNet users, though. I think the push is really starting in 2023. Wrath of Kahneman bringing this to our attention. DLocal, a Ripple user, has created a white-labeled payment platform. Here's the news with regards to that. So they're a technology-first payments platform enabling global enterprise merchants to connect with billions of consumers in emerging markets. And now they're launching an all-in-one payment platform solution to manage global platform payments all in one place. DLocal for platforms is an end-to-end -end payment solution for marketplaces, on-demand services, and other platform business models. The new solution allows the platform to onboard sellers, service providers, or contractors onto the platform itself, while DLocal has them verified before paying out. So uh, basically another one-stop shop solution for DLocal. It also enables the platform to accept payments on behalf of users, split the payments between one or more users, deduct costs as needed, and hold funds until Till payout. And just down here, some of the notable features from this uh, new platform, fast onboarding, scalable payments, multi-country support, ease of use, security and reliability. I'm noticing a lot of platforms, uh, you know, moving towards, you know, moving out of the, you know, niche, uh, you know, specific, very specific markets and moving towards one-stop shops. Basically, it seems as though everybody is growing by leaps and bounds, especially these Ripple partners. Well, I mean, these Ripple partners specifically, because these are the ones I'm focusing on. A lot of them started really, really small in 2017 and 2018, and now they are just exploding huge. Uh, you know, global usage, moving into new countries, moving into new jurisdictions. And of course, you know, it's RippleNet technology, DLT, leveraging XRP for liquidity in a lot of these cases that is really getting these guys off the ground. And in some cases, they're even buying up their competition. Here's a quote, guys. We have started a promising journey in Argentina. DLocal brings a flexible product and a willingness to continue developing features our merchants need. This flexibility can also be a lever to potentially expand our partnership to other markets such as Mexico and Brazil. So really looking to knock it out of the park, DLocal has now created this white label payment solution, but they have been one of the OG Ripple partners from very, very early on. So great news here. Wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman for posting that. Mike, also posting this, guys, with regards to Neom, another OG Ripple partner in Singapore. Okay, guys, so Singapore fintech startup gains scale, speed, and innovation in U.S. expansion. So we talked a little bit about bank runs and, uh, you know, the potential for more coming down the pipe. Uh, while bank runs and heated inflation coming on the top of a freezing fund makes for fast-moving market, like the U.S., a tough proposition for many but for Singapore fintech startups such as GreenArc Capital and Ripple-enabled Neom, the prospects far outweigh the risks. A vast marketplace beckons. Boy, this uh, article's written weird. Uh, the, the market for the finance and insurance sector in the U.S. is estimated at $6 trillion in 2023. And here's a quote, guys. The U.S. is like putting Singapore, Hong Kong, and Switzerland together. Uh, plus add in Indonesia. So you've got the very wealthy as well as the developed markets in addition to a huge developing population as well. This coming from Ronnie Palathinkal, uh, co-founder and chief executive officer of Impact Investment and Analytics Fintech, Green Art Capital. Uh, the firm helps clients fight greenwashing through its algorithm. And another quote uh, here from the COO of Neom, uh, a difficult and expensive market, but the biggest fun pool is here. People understand fintechs a lot better here with regards to the United States state. So an expansion looking likely wanted to thank Mike for posting that. Also wanted to switch gears a little bit guys and talk to you a little bit about this new VeChain partnership. VeChain is now partnering with a world leading tech company to connect the physical and a digital billion dollar market. It feels like the VeChain news is also coming out fast and furiously. VeChain Network, a top layer one L1 blockchain that intends to revolutionize the internet of things. They've now partnered with many supply chain companies around the world uh, to streamline their business operations. But in a recent update, VeChain Network has announced a strategic partnership with Authentic8.tech to enable global businesses to find a perfect balance between the digital and the physical worlds. Uh, notably, the Authentic8 team uh, has in the past seven years been working to help businesses obtain operation transparency through blockchain technology. Reportedly, global companies working in the automotive, jewelry, and food industry have also sought Authentic8 to scale their business in a cost-effective environment. And guys, I would venture to say 
that this company here, VeChain, they might do even better than some of the companies we've been following, some of the top cryptocurrencies, just because they are so expansive and they are so diversified. The fact that they deal in supply chain, right? You got to think of all the industries. Okay, this is not just payments. This is not just one thing or another thing. This is literally every business that deals in products from conception to final iteration. Okay, so this is going to be huge. Uh, so Authentic8, they're partnered with VeChain's top NFT marketplace dubbed World of V to enable businesses to tap into the physio, uh, uh, digital technology. And here's a quote down here, guys, by leveraging VeChain's tech and our partnership with Authentic8, we'll be offering an easy to use accessible gateway for digital solutions, allowing anyone to seamlessly integrate this technology without any entry barrier. So, uh, you know, the technology keeps growing. VeChain keeps leading the pack. And let me just bring up the VET token here, guys. VET right now trading at about two and a half cents. Let me get rid of that. Let's get rid of the drawings here and throw it on the daily to show you guys uh, where we're at in terms of the VeChain token. Another great buying opportunity, I think, personally. I mean, that is not financial advice, but from the top, guys, uh, the VeChain token is still down about 91%. So very good buying opportunity. At the absolute bottom back in late December, we were seeing it down uh, overall just, just about 95%. So, um, you know, compared to some other cryptocurrencies in the space, VeChain, uh, you know, trading right now, again, about two and a half cents. It did originally see a high back in 2021 of about uh, 28 cents. So you do the math on that. The percentage gains are going to be huge for this cryptocurrency. Even if you buy today and it gets back up to all time high, you could see a thousand percent gain. So something to be paying attention to. Wanted to thank Kenwood Capital for posting that. Also happen to see this guys from Matt L-I-N-Y on Twitter. More Ripple partner integration, this time with Temino's top US-based bank selects Temino's for core banking monetization in the cloud. So uh, this is brand new news just coming out uh, yesterday, further to the press release issued uh, on March the 29th, which was a few weeks ago today, Temenos announced that Regions Banks, a top bank in the US, has selected Temenos to modernize its legacy systems for customer records and deposits on the Temenos banking cloud. To move to software as a service, or SAAS, will enable Regions Bank to deliver more seamless customer experiences and more personalized banking products and services designed to help customers with businesses reaching their financial goals. And so how are they leveraging Temenos? Well, uh, they're leveraging the deep banking expertise. This is going to be delivered on cloud native solutions. Of course, Temenos Ripple enabled, so that doesn't hurt. Furthermore, the Temenos platform provides capabilities to coexist with a complex IT landscape, as well as proven industry options, in particular flagship U.S. bank models implementation by Commercial Bank, an early adopter within the U.S. region. So offering competitive, modernized solutions, uh, as John Turner, the president and CEO of Regions Financial Corporation states here, this is what they're gunning for, guys. This is what uh, I guess we have to do, or at least what banks have to do in this modern age to stay competitive. Temenos, one of those Ripple-enabled banks that has been Ripple-enabled for at least seven years now, I think. Uh, originally they started in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Here, let's see if I can find it here. Yeah, Ripple and Temenos, when was this? This was news from 27 oh, years ago, it says from this article here. Actually, just let me go, this one says 2015. So almost eight years ago now. Although at this point, I don't know if they were actually integrated with Ripple Labs or not. Uh, but uh, as far as I'm concerned here, the Temenos 24, or T24 core banking solution integrates Ripple technology. This is a confirmed update from seven years ago. So Temenos, again, one of those companies that has been Ripple enabled for quite a while and they continue to expand, guys. So that is positive news. Wanted to thank Matt for posting that. And you know, we've been hearing about this news, this eToro integration with Twitter. Uh, obviously very, very excited about that. But did you guys know this? Twitter partner eToro is openly bullish on XRP. So not only do we have Elon Musk and the connection with Chris Larson, for example, owning X.com before Elon did. Yeah, if you didn't see that video, I'll link it up here in the top right hand corner. There's also, of course, the Elon Musk connection with uh, Peter Thiel and Anderson Horowitz all holding XRP in these uh, unconfirmed accounts. But, uh, you know, some are suggesting that these accounts were earmarked for Elon Musk, Peter Thiel, and Anderson Horowitz. And this dates back years ago. Uh, and so, you know, there's this excitement here. Of course, Elon Musk owns Twitter. And now Twitter is partnered with eToro. But then, guys, the connections get even stronger, okay? Partner eToro openly bullish on XRP. But here's the catch, says this particular article. Twitter's new partner eToro will enable Twitter users to see real-time prices for a much wider range of stocks, crypto, and other assets. So uh, this article basically just kind of demonstrating or kind of outlining the, uh, the the deal and basically what has been uh, you know noted in uh, the press thus far. 
Down here, though, guys, in the wake of the Twitter eToro partnership, the crypto community is pondering about the interesting tweets that date back to 2019, and there are a heck of a lot of them. We have not seen uh, too much since then. Nevertheless, we are seeing tweets like this. Okay, I brought the tweet up here. Ian Bins also retweeted this out. Remember this? eToro guys from February the 1st, 2019, okay? So very, very, very much before the lawsuit was announced. And eToro said, the dark horse, we still don't know if Bitcoin can ever be surpassed, but XRP by Ripple Labs might just have a chance. If so, tell us, who is your dark horse candidate for football's MVP this year? So this had to do with a specific event from that point in time. But that is not it, guys. This one from Michael Branch on Twitter. Members of the XRP community believe the sixth largest cryptocurrency may likely become a major beneficiary in the partnership between eToro and Twitter based on a healthy relationship with eToro co-founder Yoni Asia. Now, guys, for those of you who do not know the founder, the co-founder uh, of eToro, has had a very, very cozy relationship with Ripple Labs and its CEOs. So check this out. I'm just going to go down in this article, but I will link it in the description for you if you are interested to read the full thing. Twitter partnership might bode well for XRP. The move has been applauded by the cryptocurrency community, especially XRP enthusiasts. Members of the XRP community believe that this connection between Yoni Asia and Ripple could bode well for the cryptocurrency. It bears mentioning that Asia is bullish on XRP and has a strong relationship with members of the Ripple team. So to start things off, the co-founder of eToro was present at Ripple's consensus party in 2018. In a 2018 tweet, he shared a short video of popular American hip hop artist Snoop Dogg entertaining the crowd at the consensus party. So guys, we have this here, Ripple Consensus 2018 party, Snoop Dogg rapping about XRP and crypto. I don't think he's actually rapping about XRP here. Uh, I, I played this clip and uh, that's a little misleading. Nevertheless, he was at the uh, the consensus party in 2018. Asia has shared several pictures of him with top Ripple executives where he went to learn more about XRapid. At that time, XRapid was uh, basically on-demand liquidity. That's what it was branded as at that point in time. The blockchain company's cross-border payment product that minimizes liquidity costs in January. January 2019, eToro co-founder met with Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse to learn about XRapid and how he can run a validator. So check this out, guys. And this is directly from Yoni Asia's uh, Twitter handle. Catching up with Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, on XRapid, XRP, and running a network validator. So this guy even wanted to run a validator. Similarly, on March 7, 2019, Asia shared a photo with him hanging out with none other than Ripple's chairman, Chris Larson. He described that the meeting was part of his efforts to learn more about X Rapid. So, you know, really getting a handle on, uh, you know, eToro's focus with on-demand liquidity at that time. So again, guys, very, very bullish on XRP. Again, this was from March of 2019. In a recent interview with Thinking Crypto, Asia stated that Ripple is making significant moves to replace the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication, or SWIFT. He noted that the Silicon Valley tech company aims to achieve this goal using innovative blockchain solutions like XRapid, allowing for faster and cheaper cross-border settlements. Asia added that Ripple has also built a fantastic relationship with several banks since its inception. Per Asia, Ripple's relationship with XRP could play a major role in boosting XRP's price in the future. So boom, guys, there you have it. Yoni Asia, very, very bullish on XRP, has been for quite some time now. And now eToro is partnering with Twitter. So looking at the Elon Musk connection, the eToro connection now in a relationship with Twitter and Yoni Asia being very, very bullish on XRP. Only time will tell to see how this relationship will materialize and if Elon Musk can pull this off, guys, I mean, Yoni did say in that Thinking Crypto podcast that, uh, you know, he sees Ripple technology replacing Swift. Could you imagine if we also had an everything app that could replace retail transactions, leveraging XRP for utility? As of today, we are seeing a 53 cent XRP. Where do you guys think it'll be at the end of the weekend? My question to you, put it down in the comments. Now, that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.